Boom! Hey there, Marvel fans! Today we are embarking on an epic journey into the realm of Marvel Cinematic Universe as we review the Marvel Legends Infinity Saga War Machine from Captain America's Civil War. So grab your shield and power on your arc reactor because we're about to uncover the truth about this legendary Marvel selectable. Are you ready? Yup! Right off the bat, let's talk about the box. Up at the front here, you'll see we have the Captain America Civil War logo. We also have the Legend Series logo on the other side. We have the Infinity Saga logo. We also have the Avengers logo, which is a uh, nod to War Machine's allegiance to Iron Man. Of course, we also have Marvel's War Machine proudly displayed on the box. Let's take a look at the artwork on the side. With a striking color design of pink, blue, and yellow, we see the MCU cast of characters from our favorite Infinity Saga series. It's like a mini gallery of our favorite heroes from all of the Infinity War Saga, setting the stage for an epic display piece. And of course, finally, we have the back, a nostalgic throwback to the Captain America Civil War movie with a poster with Iron Man and Captain America face-to-face. -face. And then, of course, we have a brief description of Rhodey and his new position as War Machine and being a one-man army. But, but wasn't he in the Air Force? As he does not operate within any definable branch of government, Iron Man presents a potential threat to the security of both the nation and to her interests. We have a clear plastic window that gives us a look at War Machine himself. Of course, he also comes with two extra hands. And then he has extra ammunition and a Gatling gun that sits on his shoulder, allowing him to live up to the moniker War Machine. Standing at about six inches tall, here we have War Machine outside of his packaging, or as he likes to call himself, the big gun. I'm not sure if that's a euphemism for something or not. You have a big gun, you are not the big gun. That's what she said. <laughs> as we get a closer look, you can see that he's got some beautiful silver paint along the body of the figure itself, including on the mask. We do have the Gatling gun and his baton on his shoulders, but near on his back. And as you can see, his Gatling gun does move up and down. Uh, it actually can go all the way up, just pointing straight up, uh, and then come down over the shoulder like that. His baton does unplug from the back, and you can just place it into his hand like so. And then, of course, the baton, once it's extended, looks like this. Then the Gatling gun itself, like I said, moves up and down. It can spin in a full 360. It also comes off, and then you'll get a plug-in for the Gatling gun for when it's not in use. Uh, you'll see on his legs, he does have extra armaments. So these are just, again, more guns. Try to get a close up of the gun there. He has two of these and they can fit on his leg as well as on his forearm. You see you have a port here and a post on the, the piece itself and it plugs in like so. And then again, it'll plug in like so on this forearm as well. So he has additional firepower on his forearms. As for articulation, his head can move left and right. It's really difficult to try to get full 360 because of the shoulders, but he can get that left and right motion. We can also have him look down and he can look up, not that far up, just a little bit. He can do a full 360 at the upper chest, like so. There is no waist spin. The shoulders can come up into a T-pose. But they cannot do a full 360. The shoulder pads are in the way, so you can only go back that far. And you can only go forward that far. So no 360, and that's just because of the shoulder pad. He can get a 360 on the bicep. And he's got double jointed elbow with pins. The covering over the top of his hand is a soft plastic. It does move a little bit. So it will allow you to do a full 360 on the wrist and then of course you can bend the palm in but because of that piece it's really difficult to bend it out on that horizontal joint as for his legs you can go back that far they can go up about that high and most of this is because of the way the figure is designed uh, as far as armor goes now he does have a double jointed knee it's pinned as you can see so it'll go up, uh, back about that far and then of course his ankles will go down they'll kind of go up and you'll kind of get a left and right, but not much, just based on the design of the calf there. Now, to swap out his hands, just all you have to do is pull the hand out, like so. 
and then you can just plug in the new hand, which is a fist. On the other side, we can do the same thing here. Just pull that out, and then we plug in the fist, just like so. And they have horizontal bends on them as well. That's how he looks, having his fists on instead of having his gripping hands. The amount of articulation that you get on this figure, it's really hard to find interesting poses. As you see, we've got this flying pose here, but that's really just the figure standing straight up and then added to a figure stand. I've got a little bit of this out of this figure as far as a pose goes. Feels a little bit more dynamic, but again, it's still very stiff as far as the figure goes. And then I have this as, as well that I found. But again, he seems like, just like his character is a secondary character in the movie, he's a secondary figure in this wave. But that's my opinion. That being said, that's my review of Infinity Saga War Machine. Again, these are just my opinions. I would love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments below. Until next time, I want to thank you guys, and we'll see you on the next review. Have a good day. If you enjoyed this review, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe for more epic toy reviews, and share your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, keep those figures posing and those collections growing. This is Joel from Talking Toys, signing.